All oh, right, I'm back. <laughs> it's late. It is so late. It's almost 12 o'clock at night, and um, I couldn't stop thinking about this game. Um, it was my first attempt at, you know, really debugging a board and trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, so, I had to get something. <laughs> I, I had to make some progress. As you can see, it looks a lot worse than when I started. Um, I tried to re well, I tried to reburn some EPROMs, some 2716s, and I, I couldn't do it, so I tried using a 2732 in place of a 2716. It didn't work. It's not able to read the EPROM at all, so that's why I've got all this blue and color garbage. So, <clears throat> it can't read the EPROM, so it's just filling in with garbage of whatever it's getting out of the chip. So... But that's that's not what I'm addressing right now. Right now I'm trying to address, um, I was trying to confirm which chip was bad, which causes uh, the sprites to go behind these bars and uh, get exactly what may be causing that. So Mike's Arcade mentioned uh, a particular chip on the two board set. Let's see if I can pull it up over here. Um, Probably not. Um, I think it was 8P or something like that. Um, got the schematic down here. Uh, yeah, 8P. I think I think is what he's or no. 8R. He mentioned 8R was was giving him the bars, so he replaced this chip, and everything was working for him. Well, I, I looked at this chip. I probed it around on it, and uh, it seemed fine. Um, so I started looking around in this area some more. Uh, probably the rest of the chips, and I noticed there was definitely something sketchy going on with another one. Uh, wasn't 8R? I believe mine was uh, 7P. And I have the four board set, and this is the two board set schematics. But you can translate the two board ske set schematics to the four board. Almost all the logic is the same, and you can find um, you basically have to use these as the chip names on here. Not the board, not the names from the board, but the actual part numbers of the chip. So, like, if you're if you're looking in this area, and you want to know where these chips are at, you kind of have to look at the surrounding pieces to kind of give your give yourself a general idea of where you need to be looking to find them. So, it just so happens on the four board set for these four two eighty threes, they actually exist right in here. Um, let me get some more light real quick. Okay, so that's maybe too much light, but. They're just right in here. These these four chips right here are the ones that are on the schematic for the two board set. <clears throat> so I was probing around in here trying to figure out what the heck is going on, just see if there's anything that just seems a little bit odd or out of place. And you just start her probing around, looking around. And then right here, I got right here, I noticed there's nothing there. It's probing right there, nothing, nothing. And I probe right here at the test point and nothing. So nada. And so I was like, well, is it supposed to be that way? And that's when I went and looked up the specs on it. And the pin that uh, isn't responding is one, two, three, four, pin five. Sorry, pin five right here, nothing. And pin five, according to the data sheet, is uh, right here and that is supposed to be an operand input so on pin 5 of this TTL chip, this 283 it's actually supposed to be getting some sort of an input so I was like, well great, okay, what does that mean? okay, uh, so I figure uh, that means something's supposed to be coming into the chip and driving it and look, if you look real closely here you can see some values that are labeled on this particular 7P chip that I'm probing and they're right on this bus and you can't read that, I couldn't read that, so I had to pull up a scan of the let's see here I'll scroll back down where I was at okay so right in here you can kinda see and make out what this looks like to be some numbers. You have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 
uh, not sure what that's supposed to be. I think it's, it should be like 32, 32, 64, and 128. And then some sort of <laughs> hieroglyph next to it. These scans are terrible. But then you could see that the the pin I was probing, pin 5, it belongs to 16, and this is I think this is supposed to be VF or something. V, I don't know. We'll find out in a second, but if you follow this data bus, follow this line right here, go up. I'm like, okay, where's this thing going? Following along, I noticed, oh, here's some of these VF things. All right, well, there's one, two, and four. What was the rest of them? The rest of them, if you follow this little fork in the road, it goes this other direction. And those are being driven by this, looks like one chip on the schematic. But it's not one chip. If you see right down here, it says X3. That's three different chips. And these chips are the LS157 chips. Okay, awesome. Well, if I look here inside this bus, you can see the value of 16 VF. This is the leg of the chip that is supposed to be driving the one I was probing. So I would assume, I would hope that there would be something coming out of this chip for 16 VF on this particular leg, which you can hardly make this out too, but I think this well, actually I've confirmed it's supposed to be 13. I think. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm thinking back and I'm second guessing myself. But anyways, so there's supposed to be something coming out of this chip, going into the bus and driving my 283. And giving me some sort of high or low value. Right? Okay, so given that, what the heck are these things at, right? So this is my this is what I got to go off of. So what I did was I looked over here and I saw, okay, there's an LS86 TTL logic chip. And here we've got a couple of, a, a pin here, a pin 8, which is tied to pin number 10 on what is 3. <laughs> so there's 2, 3, and 4 of these three different 157. So I'm listening, okay, where the heck are these things? Oh, and the other thing I had to go off of was these 2114s. Well, my board doesn't have any 2114s. So I had to use another reference, which was this uh, from Braze. He's got these mappings of uh, different ROMs, PROMs, RAMs between the uh, four-board stack over here and the two-board stack. And I'm looking at these two one one fours, and I know these are character. This is character data that I'm looking at here. And I've got five L and five M. Great. So that gives me a reference point on my board. Which is actually right down here. These these two chips right here. These are the RAMs for character data, which is drawn out of these two EEPROMs. So it pulls the data out of these EEPROMs and it's stored in these RAMs. And then it's referenced data is pulled from these RAMs by through the TTL chips through the data bus and pushed out to the screen, right? Okay, so <clears throat> so knowing the kind of general area, I was able to find that they're right next to these two RAM chips are these 157's right here three of them just as in the schematic as designated and looking closely I also found the logic chip here which is 86p yeah right there 86p so I found him I was like okay great now I can use him as a reference to try and find the chip in question so going back here looking at the diagram okay so pin 8 off of 86 is going to be tied to pin number 10 okay so I can take my probe and find pin number 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 I was like okay cool there's pin 8 well what sounds like pin 8 it's on pin 10 See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you hear that pulse? So that's a faster pulse. And that one's more on par. Now the pitch is a little bit different. You'll see why in a second. So, I think this is the chip. I think this is three. So, that kind of makes sense. Um, you go two, three, and then four. So, that kind of makes sense, I guess. So, this is the guy in the middle, right? 
So number three is in between two and four. <laughs> That's difficult, right? Okay, so <clears throat> so I'm guessing this is the dude, right? So I look back at the schematic and I'm going, okay. Well, if that's the guy, I'm trying to figure out what this 16 VF is, and it looks like it's next to pins, or it's tied to pin 13, and it's driven by pin 12. Okay. Well, this is pin 10, so here's 11. Here's pin 12. Okay, and so this is the pin that's supposed to be driving the one in question, and here's 13. Completely dead. Nothing. And this is the pin that's supposed to be driving the 283 that's way up there that I'm getting nothing on. So, I thought that was interesting. Since I am getting data inputted here, I was curious to know what would happen. I've got the, the screen here. So this is the game. I've got a webcam up, and I'm watching the game as I'm working on the board. And if I take my probe... And I bridge these two pins. Watch what happens. Oh, you're gonna miss it. So let's wait for the uh, the game to roll around. So right now I've got it on pin. Whatever this pin is, twelve. And watch what happens when I start putting a few bits down the line. Yeah, buddy. No more bars. You can see it's a little bit sketchy, but what's happening is that the, the 283 is actually getting data input to it. And it's breaking the bars apart and allowing the sprites to basically push through. And that actually cleans that up a little bit. You can kind of read that now. Donkey. You can kind of see coin there. It's cleaning up the words a little bit. Player. So the nothing. See the L? So that cleans up a lot of stuff because there's a lot of information that's being lost because this is an entire address line that's not being that's not being sent. So there's Mario who's moving through those what were before uh, invisible lines. So there you go. So we've got a bad 157. I was gonna order some 283s because I read Mike's arcade and I thought, hey, that's probably exactly I mean that. My symptoms were spot on to what he was describing. My 283s were probably bad, so I put some in my shopping cart, anticipating to uh, just go ahead and buy some of those and fix the problem. But if I put a, if I replaced all of my 283s on this board, it would have done me no good. Because the problem wasn't that the 283s weren't muxing things properly, it's the problem was that there was never being any data driven to them to begin with. So what I gotta do, is replace these little guys. At least this guy, one five, this 157. So he's not pulling data out of the RAM chips properly. So it's the data is there waiting for it, uh, waiting waiting to be populated into this chip. But uh, but yeah, I mean I've got to. Uh, yeah, he's not doing anything with it. So I mean he's not he's not pushing it down the line. So. It's nothing's coming out of this pin, so there's something broke here. This is, uh, I guess, what's called floating. This is a floating. Uh, Adam calls it uh, something about floating. I can't quite remember, but uh, anyways, he's bad. He's sketchy, as Adam would put it. So I got to get him replaced. Anyways, uh, yeah, lots of credit for this video uh, goes to Mr. Adam at One Circuit. This is my first board repair, and uh, learned a lot from him. Um, also learned a lot from John. Also learned a lot from uh, my the first set of videos I was watching was from actually uh, some pinball series with Ray. I thought it was kind of funny. Anyways, interesting. But um, yeah, this is great. So that's one step, I think, in a really good direction here that's going to clean a lot of the stuff up on this board. But uh, bef I got to get some sockets in. I've got to get some of these chips in before I can replace it. But it's good to know that I have a chip on here that I know if I replace it, I'm going to get a big difference in uh, what I have on the screen, <laughs> which looks bad right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to get this one nailed down. Hopefully, uh, after I get that fixed, and then here, here's that dud. Uh, I put a 2732 in here. I, I was reading a uh, uh, data sheet on a 2716 for Intel, and it 
pretty much said that the 2716 and the 2732s were interchangeable. This one, however, is a D2732A. Uh, could be a little different. <laughs> but it was a 2732 that I had ready to go and I could burn to it. My Needham EMP11 will not burn 2716s at all. There's some sort of, uh, I don't know, some sort of issue with it. Needs an adapter or something. I've got the module, family modules, but it's not good enough. It wants something else. Uh, it does mention a 40 pin to 24 pin adapter. But, um, yeah, these 2716s aren't 40 pins. They're, they're 24 pin. So, I don't even know why it mentions that. It could be an issue with, like, the way that the driver DLLs were compiled or something. I'm not sure. I wish that darn thing would do 2716s because I've got a Donkey Kong Jr. that also needs to have an EEPROM rewritten. So I wanted to try to figure out how I'm going to get a 2716 burned and put back on this board. So, I mean, I've got some working ones. I just, I just need to be able to get them on here. Anyways, um, I'll just wrap this, this one up here and then bring you guys back after I get the chip replaced. Um, if I find something else out, I'll I'll bring you back then too. But this, I think this is going to do a lot um, in getting things cleaned up. So, anyways, catch you guys in just a minute.